Welcome to Line by Line, Making Your Mark in the Arts. Today we're going to talk about the theater and specifically about technical theater. Many times we go to the theater and we think, oh, that is magic. But actually it's not magic. It takes a lot of work and a lot of passion to make that happen. Is that right, Kathy? That is correct. That is correct. <laughs> we have with us today um, Kathy Snyder. She is a faculty a professor of acting, design, and makeup at HCC, the Center of Excellence of Media, Visual, and Performing Arts. Welcome to the show. We're so happy that you're here. Thank you, Tony. I really appreciate it. So talking about technical theater, um, there are uh, a lot of things that uh, go into making a play. Uh, but uh, now, uh, none of us, I don't think, have the expertise in every area, but it is good if we understand all the other areas. So um, tell us, uh, that we have some new tracks for, or a new track for theater majors. They can make some choices. Tell us about that. Yes, so we have three. Um, most people, when they think of theater or going into you know, theater, they think about acting. That's maybe directing, sometimes writing, and they don't think, don't realize that that's sort of, you know, the top tiny bit of the iceberg that is theater. Um, uh, but so we have uh, three tracks to cover all of the things. So the first one is performance, and that is primarily acting. And that is the lion's share. Most people want to be actors. Even people who later become designers and directors sometimes start out as actors because that's what most people see when they see theater. So we have performance. And then we have uh, the technical uh, line, which is for designers, uh, set, costumes, light, sound, and it goes beyond that, props. Um, uh, but also stage crews, people don't think about all the people that work behind the scenes to make all the magic happen. There are not only the people running the show, but also the people that make all the costumes and make the sets and uh, make the sound and the lights happen. And there's a lot of people, there's so many more people in that area than in any other area. And then we have a general uh, path, if you will. Um, and the general path is one is for people that are not sure, or maybe they want to do several things. So they want to learn everything or they want to be an administration or a director type. So they need to know a little bit of everything. Um, it's also for people who want to be go into education, people who want to be teachers or in a small enough theater where you kind of need to have to know every a little bit of everything in order to um, do well. So there are those uh, three. There are even people that don't make the theater itself, like uh, uh, dramaturges. They are people who do all the you know academic part. They study plays. They find new plays. They um, when you have a play like a Shakespeare, they do all the research. And so sometimes those people are also in that that general section um, because they do a lot of history and that sort of thing. And so the performance people do mostly the acting sort of things, but they have to take some, a little bit of the other stuff. Um, the technical people take mostly the technical part, um, but they do take, they have to take acting, the first level of acting, you know? Um, and then the general people can take a little smattering of everything. There are certain things that, everybody should have to take a little bit of everybody else's discipline so that when you're working together, because theater is a collaborative art, um, you want to be able to understand where the other people are coming from so you can all make the right compromises to make the thing perfect as perfect as it can be anyway <laughs> absolutely um so uh, there's many directions you can go but yeah. today we want to talk mostly about technical theater because a lot of people really don't know very much about it you know it's true, um, it's true. And, and that is your expertise so uh tell us a little bit about what kind of courses would the students be taking for the technical end? So they do have to take some things that are outside, like they have to take acting. Um, and uh, But most of the rest of the courses are actually directly involved. Uh, um, they have to take general courses like introduction to theater and theater history. Uh, they have to take uh, makeup design, which Tony and I both teach. We are the two teachers of makeup, by the way. 
Uh, um, but <laughs> they, everybody has to take the first level of stagecraft, but often uh, there's two levels of stagecraft, which teaches you how to build the sets, but also how to hang the lights and to do sound. Um, they take costume construction, which is how to build costumes, because believe it or not, it's so it's actually quite difficult <laughs> to make costumes. Think people think that's an easy one. It is not. No, not at it all. Is not. <laughs> not um, at all. <laughs> and then this fall, I'm teaching the first ever uh, theater theatrical design class, which I'm super excited about. Um, my undergraduate degree is in design. It says design. Nothing. No. No qualifiers there. Plain design. <laughs> yeah, I'm design. That's my that's my, that's my jam. Um, so as and we teach it's design in general and we'll talk about each of the different disciplines and do a little work on each one so you're learning the design principles and the basic idea of design in that so um and there's uh i'm trying to think there's acting one and two and there's practicum so practicum is where we actually do the play and our students get to do everything they get to do acting they get to do Sometimes design work, we haven't had too many of those, but we've had a few. Um, set, the set crew, construction crew, uh, running crew, uh, lights and sound operators, uh, a, a, a stage managing, which is the hardest working person in theater. Um, so yes. <laughs> it really is. They wear um, hats, actually. <laughs> right. That's the one job I've never done because I'm seriously afraid, but I've done just about everything else. <laughs> Everything but that one. <laughs> so you said uh, some of the students, they do have a, a, a chance to try to design, right? Um, when, if, they've taken, if they've taken the uh, basic courses and they've shown a proficiency in something and, and have a real desire, sometimes they'll work with us a, in working on a higher level than normally you get within two, two year school. And so we've had a few people that have been like proficient enough to design. And I'm hoping to get uh, a couple of people designing on a smaller level uh, costumes this um, this fall. We've had uh, sound designs. We had a, I had a sound designer that was a student. He was great. Um, I think he's working professionally now as a sound designer. So um, we've had some stage managers, which I would count up in that level. I mean, that's a high level. Um, we've had some great student stage managers and um, uh, several of them have gone on to very prestigious um, programs. So I'm very, very pleased about that. Acting too. Yeah, in fact, in fact I think one of our, my makeup students was one of those going to the Alley Theater. She's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've been doing well. We've been doing well. <laughs> so uh, that's really good. And, and that's good news for students because when you go to HCC, I think one of the greatest things about HCC is that students get hands-on experience, much That's more okay. than if you started at a four-year college. What do you think about that? I think you're absolutely right. Um, I, when I went to U of H, um, uh, there was a lot of competition for all the acting parts and all the um, you know backstage and everything. And they had a huge department. We have a much smaller department and we're able to give the kids everything they need. You know, and I'd like to talk about this, uh, this one some more in more depth, but yes, we give every kid that wants to be in a play something to do in the play. So it's great, it's great. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're gonna talk more about this. We're gonna talk about what research, why research is important um, and, and some other things about technical design, but let's go ahead and take a quick break because they're giving me some time cues here and we will be right back. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. 
the faculty at HCC represents the best of the city. They're committed to getting our students to their goals. HCC, for everyone, anytime, anyway. Welcome back to Line by Line, where we show you how you can make your mark in the arts. But today, we're talking about theater, and really in particular, technical theater. And we have with us Kathy Snyder from HCC faculty, teaches all kinds of technical and otherwise theater, a uh, great expert. Um, she's gonna tell us a little bit more. Uh, we just touched on the idea of researching. Uh, why is research important for the theater in design and in, you know, just, depending on what play you're doing and that kind of thing. Well, you know, a lot of people, when they think about, you know, I could design that, you know, I could go to the store and, and buy that. Um, uh, they are going off of their own, whatever life they've lived or where they live. But plays are often not, even if they're set, set in here and now, they're not set right here and right now, right? And you can just travel around the country and you will see variations on clothes and architecture and what people like, even colors. Northern, right now we live in the deep south. It's much hotter, right? Although right now everybody's hot, right? But if you're doing a period piece, um, you know, a time period, not only like, you know, you go 3000 years back, there might not be a lot of variation within an area, but you go like, around the world is completely different mm -hmm. um and you get further closer to us you get in time the more changes happen because we become a global culture and influences happen faster so if you're doing a victorian show you know it depends on which decade you're in the 1850s look vastly different than 1900 which is still all the victorian period so uh and that goes for even things like lights and sound, like sound, music, um, the music of a time period, um, the colors of the costumes or the set, even the like wallpaper. I remember being so excited once I did a set for stages a long time ago. It was a lovely, a lovely afternoon for Crevecourt or something like that. I can't remember. So it's Tennessee Williams. And it's set in the 30s. And I found this 30s wallpaper. It was a reproduction. And I got so excited wow. because I knew <laughs> it was correct, right? Yes. <laughs> um, you should always base it in that. You don't necessarily have, some people want to have it be realistic. It's like a super realistic play. You want realistic costumes that look like the realistic period. But if you are doing a non-period, but you kind of want this militaristic feel, you might pick these three periods in time, look at them and figure out what works from each and put them all together. So a knowledge of uh, time periods and places and the differences in those, difference in socioeconomic levels of people, you know, how poor people lived, how rich people lived, how middle class lived, all of those things are important for all aspects of design. If you're designing an umbrella, what does it look like in a Victorian age <laughs> relative to now? Not a whole lot of difference, but there is difference. So there is. Di I, I remember I minored in history and you know, right. that worked so perfect in the research area, right? <laughs> right. My, my undergraduate degree had a lot of art history mm -hmm. and I had eight semesters, eight semesters of art history. And that <laughs> has stood me so well because I can go, Oh, I remember this painting from blah, 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 blah. Right. Because right. art, when you get back, so far it's art is your main inspiration for those right. time periods you don't have any other way to look at what they look like you're doing right. ancient egyptians it's art right exactly so. that's wonderful mm -hmm. well um okay we got some b-roll of <laughs> of some of the stuff that you guys have been doing we've even got a time lapse uh, awesome. video uh tell us you know there's a lot of things that goes into building a set and, mm -hmm. and, 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 oh, and the designs we, you know, we have renderings and tell us a little bit about how you go about, okay, you've got a design in your head. Now, how do you tell other people what this design is going to look like? Right. And it, if you're doing a set, um, the first thing you start off with, if you're talking to a director is you have your research, show the pictures from your research and you might do things called thumbnail sketches, which are very quick 
you do that with costumes too, and maybe even props, really quick sketches. But once you've kind of gone, yeah, 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 that's what I'm looking at, you start doing finished drawings. So there are several different things. You have uh, elevations, which are like front on uh, drawings to scale of what it looks like. You can have floor plans, which is like looking at it from um, the top and where all the layout of all the pieces are. And uh, you can have renderings, which are a drawing of like a conceptual idea of with lights and color, what it looks like. You can do models. Models are great. They're to scale and they're little, you know, they can be of various sizes. And for, especially if you have a director that's challenged with a two dimensional drawing, can't see it in three dimensions, a model's a great way to go because they go, I see how much space there is here. Um, uh, in costuming, we use renderings, drawings of uh, the costume, um, and often with uh, fabric attached um, so that you can see which fabric goes where. There might be notes uh, where it goes in the play. Um, lighting has lighting plots. It shows where all the instruments are hung and basically where they're being uh, channeled to and what colors they are. Um, and which ones are put together into one um, into one uh, uh, dimmer so that you can lower them. Um, music, you might bring, I mean, uh, sound, you would bring musical types and tapes. They're often provided for sound effects during the rehearsal period so that, that the stage manager can play them so the actors get used to that sort of thing. Um, production meetings, you bring things to production meetings if things are going to change or if you got an idea that might shift around. So there's a lot of different ways to tell a, a director and actors what it's going to look like. And the designer and the director, if they're not the same person, which sometimes, especially in the smaller theaters, they are the same person, <laughs> but if they're not, <laughs> they have to communicate. They have to, I mean, because the director is the one with the... Correct. The, the concept, there the design the concept, concept usually comes from the director, right, correct. Um, and talks with, especially in professional theater, they start months and occasional years in advance. Um, you talk to them before you even read the play. Um, and then um, you talk to them and you talk to the other designers mm -hmm. um, and you come up with a concept. You don't design in a vacuum. You never design in a vacuum. Exactly. You don't get to exactly. choose. People think, oh, that designer, what was he thinking? Well, he didn't think alone. No. <laughs> <laughs> you think it? He may uh, have to give up some of his thoughts that he really wanted to do because the director said, no, this is Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly true. And it's often, if you have a good director, and I've had, I, I work with some directors a lot that I love working with, and they love working with me because we have a vocabulary that we know works right. with each other um but yes it's a constant talking and like the thumbnail research that can go back several times before oh, yeah. you get to the rendering section um exactly. with actually putting things down on paper um and then once it's okay then you go to your shops your set your scene shop your costume shop um the master electrician and those are and then those people help you realize um whatever your design is and you're right i mean Occasionally as a director, and I do direct, I also design costumes because costumes is my biggest area, but I've designed sets and props and some other things too. Um, but uh, it's better not to. Uh, oh. It's really, really better not I'm to. So on that. I am so a, on that. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. It's a it's lot, a lot of work. work. It's kind of like acting and being the director too. Oh no. <laughs> no, that's even but worse. You did that, I think. <laughs> That, that's even worse, actually, it's because worse. you can't you can't tell you can't when you're not acting it. well. Yeah, no, no, you can see a set and go, yeah, that's not good. But, but not, uh, not that. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, okay. Well, um, now there are uh, we showed some, uh, or I think we're showing some of the uh, the servant of two masters, uh, the um, the hook's tail, and some of that. And you know, you show. Do you? I know the answer, but I, I want to hear the audience. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you do a design for each and every character? How do you go about doing that? Uh, well, if you're doing costumes, yes, you do design for every single character. They need to go together, obviously. 
um, and you design them as a whole, but, um, and I've done renderings where I did several on the same page. Uh, it's more traditional to do a single one, but yeah, you have to design everybody. Even, you know, the people that walk on and walk off and never say a word, those people get designed too. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're doing a set, you don't just design the walls and the, uh, you know, the, you know, the doors and everything. You have to design all of the stuff. I mean, there might be some give and take with the decoration, but you design everything. Uh, so and yeah. color, you know, between the lighting person and the 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 set design and painting yes. and and costume, makeup, everything, everything has to flow together. You can't, as you say, you don't do it in a vacuum. Okay, I got to take a break. They're telling me to take another break. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we will be right back with some more stuff about technical theater and a little bit about you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll be back. How prepared is your family if disaster shows up at your doorstep? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov slash plan before they show up. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, Let's go. you'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes! Make a plan today. I love teaching at HCC. I love helping students. With college credits. With scholarships and financial aid. Training them for life-changing careers. Come learn with us. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. line by line. We have with us today Professor Kathy Snyder. She's with the HCC Theater and she teaches all kinds of theatrical courses and we're so glad to have you have you here Kathy. Thank you. Uh, let's okay let's go into there's a lot of things to talk about. We could spend hours and hours I know I could on technical theater Same. And et cetera but uh, Let's let's tell the audience a little bit about you. And the reason I say that's so important is because a lot of times students really, if they know their instructor or their uh, has been in the theater, has done it themselves, has you know blah 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 all that stuff. <coughs> Sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have a cat back and, here, <laughs> and this is pretty much live so you know we have to go with it but anyways um it's good for them to know the kind of experience the instructor has had it makes them feel even more confident so tell us a little bit about your professional background okay well first thing i want to say is for the students that try to sign up for my class and look for kathy snyder my first name is gary which is my mother's first name and my daughter's first name so you know there you go um it's, it, it's a great icebreaker um, i get confused on it too so I know. That, that was a very important note to say okay go ahead <laughs> <laughs> um well i got my undergraduate at clemson university which is in south carolina big football um uh, college and i uh, got my graduate degree from the university of houston which has a great theater department um and I've worked a lot around town in the professional theaters. Uh, I work a lot at Stages Repertory Theater. I, I usually do two, one or two shows a year um, as a designer, and occasionally I work as a craft master. So I'm a, a designer primarily, but I'm also a craft master. And that means in the costume shop, the craft master is the person who builds like masks and giant headdresses and does all the dyeing and the painting and all the fun stuff in, uh, yeah. Yeah, in theater, I think. <laughs> I've made huge monster heads. I mean, who gets to do that? I know, right? I, like I work that. as a craft master. I've worked at the Alley Theater, the Grand Opera, the ballet. Um, I designed masks and made masks for a ballet uh, production at the Houston um, Ballet. Um, I uh, direct here at HEC. I've done, I've designed at the, and been in the craft master for the Houston Shakespeare Festival, 
and the Houston Children's Festival, Rebels Houston, Unity Theater. Um, so I work around a lot. Um, you said you had pictures of Hook's Tale. That's the last thing I designed professionally. Um, that was a world premiere. It was last fall. It was the first show the stages had coming back from COVID. I'm very, very blessed that they asked me to do that. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, who gets to design Captain Hook? You know, I that's, know. It's, it's wonderful. Like you go back into your childhood. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a fun and exciting career and I've really enjoyed it. I also knew early on that I wanted to teach um, because I just love the college environment. So um, I was super happy to be able to do both, you know. It's you know, I, and, and that's the other thing. A lot of people ask me and other people this question is, what made you go into theater? And then again, even further, what made you go into technical theater as a particular choice? Oh, that's a good question. So I was at Clemson and I was in design, but it was in the, I was an art major in an architecture department. So I have half architecture, half fine arts. I was a drawing and painting major. Ah. And I was actually thinking about going into art history and then I had to take an approved elective and I took set design and my life shifted on that decision. <laughs> um, I took it and I got to work on a show that was a new show, uh, a, like never been done before. It was a student uh, written play. It went really far, it was at the ACTF a festival and fell hook, line, and sinker and realized, see, when you draw and paint, it's a singular, you do it yourself, mono art. But theater is a collaborative art. And I had never done that before. I'm very, I don't know if you could tell, I'm kind of a gregarious person. So the <laughs> idea of making art in a group, magic. It was yeah. magic. And yeah. I think that is what draws most people in, to be honest with you. It is not the fame, it's not definitely not the money, Oh no! It is it is the art, and it is the camaraderie. Um, so those things are, like I said, you, like you said, are starting off. That's what makes magic. That's what makes magic. That's right. That's right. It makes the magic, but it isn't magic. You have to make the magic. That's right. You're the magic. <laughs> you are the magic. Yeah, I remember. Well, you tell me that. I remember. I was a voice major when I started out in college. And then I, I tried out for a play, and then all of a sudden, guess what happened? Whoop! <laughs> I was now a that pivot. Major. <laughs> yep. And I've been hooked ever since. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, okay, so uh, what, do we, what do the students have to do uh, to sign up for theater? I, I know everybody's got to go to hcs.edu slash apply. But after they do that, what are some things they should know about? Well, our um, uh, classes are under D-R-A-M, like drama, just leave that last day off. Um, and uh, we teach at a lot of the different campuses. I'm on at the Stafford campus, and but there's a lot at Central, but they're actually all over. Um, most of them you can sign up for. There are a few that you have to take the first one before you can take, like, I think it used to be you could take acting too before you took acting one, but you can't do that anymore. You have to take acting one first. Anybody can take acting, by the way. Um, the only courses that are restricted in any way are the practicum classes. Uh, those when you're actually working, getting credit, working on the play, you need a, a number, you need a permission number to get in. So you have to contact the teacher to get in. Okay, well, that sounds good. And just contact the theater department. We'll get you through it, okay? Thank yep. you, Kathy, so much for being on the show. Like I say, we could talk forever, but we could. We got it. We got it close. So, anyways, thank you everybody for watching Line by Line, and keep watching us because we help you keep your mark on the arts. So, we'll see you next time on Line by Line. Mm -hmm.